So you've got the EA897 3 litre TDI engine from the Volkswagen Audi Group and you're just curious to know what sort of things you should be on the lookout for. Those common problems that crop up quite frequently with owners. So thankfully this engine is relatively reliable when you look at a lot of its contemporary diesel engines. But there are a few things on the 3 litre TDI that you just need to watch out for. Some are down to bad driver habits and things that you can do to extend the life and the reliability of your engine. And others are just weak spots that often Often get highlighted when people start to have breakdowns and problems. So the aim of this video is not to make out that these are particularly unreliable engines, just to make you aware of those potential problems and pitfalls so you can be on the lookout for them and catch them early on before they become significant issues. <laughs> So if you start to get misfires and flat spots, one of the causes of that is quite often the high pressure fuel pump. So this is the bit really that takes the fuel out of the fuel tank and pushes it towards those injectors. So if that's not getting sufficient pressure in the fuel system, the fuel system is going to start experiencing flat spots. There's not going to be enough fuel flowing at certain RPM points and the ECU is going to do its best to adjust around. So quite early on when this problem starts to develop, you may not even notice it. But then those hesitant spots start to get progressively worse. And if you can track the problem down, it's often that high pressure fuel pump that just needs renewing, replacing or needs to be addressed. So again, with the fuel system, you've got to keep an eye on those fuel injectors so the fuel injectors in a diesel engine especially the three litre TDI are doing a lot of work it's dealing with very very high pressures there's a lot of fuel flowing into these engines because they do make quite a significant amount of power as you'll see in the tuning mods video that we've published on this channel so those fuel injectors are really designed to get the fuel into the engine but also to atomize the fuel as effectively as possible with a fine mist of a spray pattern so any kind of degradation in the nozzles the injectors themselves can adversely affect the way that fuel is burnt and you'll be down on power you may well end up with a very very sooty burn the single biggest problem that we see on the injectors on these diesel engines is just carbon buildup. So over time, as the engine starts burning fuel, it will get deposits of carbon and unburnt soot embedding into the injectors themselves. And that dramatically alters the spray pattern and the efficiency of the injectors. So running good quality fuel is normally the best way of avoiding that problem altogether because it cleans the engine as it goes. So a lot of the more expensive premium brands of fuel have very, very specific specifically formulated cleaners within them to make sure that the injectors don't suffer from this problem. But you can get aftermarket injector cleaners. So I am planning a video where we look at all the different brands of injector cleaner. But for now, the one that I recommend is the BG range. BG is one of those injector cleaners that I've used in most of the cars that I've had. And I've been very impressed with the end results. The bottles you get tend to have more concentrated stuff that does its job. Whereas a lot of the other brands, it's a little bit of that liquid that does the cleaning job diluted down in some sort of base carrier. So as well as blocking the injector and affecting the spray pattern, it can also affect the amount of fuel that is going into the engine. So within the injectors, they're dealing with quite high pressures. So there's various little seals and things inside the injectors. If those seals have started to degrade or leak, that can affect the entire fuel system pressure, effectively leaking tiny amounts of fuel out, lowering the pressure, forcing all the other components in the fuel system to work extra hard to try and make up for those inadequacies. Also inside the injectors, it's not uncommon to see cracks forming. So with the general heat and cool cycles that the engine goes through and the continual vibrations you're getting from the diesel engine, those injectors are taking quite a pounding all of the time. So it's not surprising that cracks can start to form little micro fissures in the structure of the injectors themselves and those can lead to structural issues that affect the way the injector works so experiencing warm start and cold start issues we've got videos on diagnosing the Volkswagen Audi group warm start cold start issues so we're not going to go too far into it but we are going to mention glow plugs because glow plugs can degrade over time the idea is that the glow plugs raise the cylinder temperature to allow the fuel to burn correctly on those cold winter 
winter morning. Once the engine is burning, there's a lot of residual heat left in the cylinders. So it becomes a sort of runaway process where it starts to propagate itself almost. You don't need to keep putting that extra amount of heat in through the glow plugs. But if those glow plugs are not getting enough voltage, they're not getting hot enough, or they're just not kicking in at the right point, it can make starting the car very, very difficult on those cold days. And you can test the glow plugs and make sure that they're working, that they're drawing enough current and that they are warming up. It's usually better to get them tested than to just randomly replace them, hoping that that may fix the cold start issue you're experiencing. But if you're getting cold start problems, check out the video that we've done on cold start issues, because that goes into a whole set of potential problems and pitfalls that you can have on your conventional diesel engine that can make that starting quite hard. So this is something we pretty much have to mention on every diesel engine. And a lot of it is down to the driver and the sort of distances they cover. So the diesel particulate filter, this is designed to capture those large sooty particles, particularly when the engine is warming up and it's not burning cleanly and efficiently. It traps those in a sort of filter, a mesh, and as that mesh gets hot and warms up, it burns off those particles. So they effectively become much smaller particles and they can pass out of the filter into the atmosphere where they theoretically do less harm than those bigger particles. I say theoretically, the studies now that show that these really small particles can also be hazardous to health. So it's a typical situation where we've identified a problem, tried to fix it. And there's another problem down the line that people haven't anticipated. So for me, the jury is out on whether diesel particulate filters are effective at reducing harmful emissions. They certainly do reduce the smoke and the soot. So it's a good thing. They're there to meet emissions regulations in most countries. So we're kind of stuck with them. But if you only do short journeys, they never get warm enough to burn off the soot that's collected inside. And that will eventually lead to them clogging up. So first of all, they'll start to fill up and the exhaust gases will flow much more slowly through them. So you'll be down on power. Then your engine will try and kick into a cleaning cycle where the burn temperature of the exhaust is raised to try and get those particles burnt off. And if that fails, you will just be left with a blocked DPF filter, which is very, very expensive to replace. And it's a real hassle. And nine out of 10 times, you can avoid that problem by driving it hard and avoiding those short journeys where the engine is just not warming up to temperature. So the timing chain in these engines connects the crank at the bottom of the engine to the cams at the top. And it's doing a lot of work. There's a lot of vibrations that go on in there. So these timing chains and belts can stretch over time, which can affect the timing of the valves and the way they open and close. But a significant problem happens when the timing chain tensioner breaks. That can lead to big vibrations in the timing chain itself. And when the timing chain is out, those cams are rotating at the wrong angles. That can have catastrophic consequences for the engine. So you will typically notice the early signs of this being a ticking noise in the side of the engine that houses the cam gears and the timing chain and timing chain tensioner. You'll notice this on the side of the engine where that timing chain resides. And if you have a rattling or a ticking noise in there that increases and decreases with the engine RPMs, it is probably the timing chain that needs some attention. So stick very closely to the manufacturer's recommended service intervals, perhaps even shorten them. Don't assume that it's seven years or 80,000 miles or whatever your handbook says. There are some differences in different regions and with different models and different brands, but it's whichever comes soonest when those recommendations are made. So whichever you hit, make sure that you get that belt changed and check the tensioner. A lot of people I know replace the tensioner at the same time as the belt just to avoid those problems. But in most cases, that tensioner will last about two belt changes. In most instances, and for most people I talk to, they do the tensioner every time they've changed that cam belt themselves. But do check it for play. You can just pop the plastic covers off and just make sure that everything is within tolerances. And if you notice it's starting to go, jump on that quick because it's a very, very expensive repair job, particularly if you've neglected it and you've allowed that problem to get out of hand. So I hope this video has just highlighted some of those common areas to look out for. So you've seen that a lot of them are down to us and what we do to the engine and how we treat it. Keep up with those service intervals, use the correct grade of oil, and you should have relatively little trouble from these three litre TDI engines. So please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. We've got more videos coming up and help you to get the best out of your three litre TDI EA89 seven engine and if you haven't subscribed please do so because we would love you to stay tuned and i'll see you in the next video